Now, thanks to new fossil discoveries and technologies, we're getting to learn more and more about the biology of dinosaurs. Some people don't need to know more than the fact that a few of them were colossal, terrifying, and vicious. But for those of us that do, the use of comparative biology, pigment analysis, and powerful new x-rays have allowed us to gain insight into specific features, such as their colors, eating behaviors, and the shapes of their tongues. Yes, that's right, the shapes of their tongues, which, for a long period of time, was something of a mystery. This is because soft, fleshy dinosaur parts are hardly ever retained in fossil form. But thanks to the discovery of some surviving hyoid bones, which are situated at the root of the tongue in front of the neck, we now have some insight. Most animals have this hyoid bone that anchors the tongue. The shape and complexity of the bone determine how free-moving the tongue can be. Scientists have discovered that nearly all dinosaurs had simple tongues that laid flat and were extremely similar to the tongues found inside the mouth of a crocodile today. Yeah, this crocodile. Go ahead and take a closer look. Nah, just kidding. Come on back. Let's take a look at some specific dinosaurs and start with a Brachiosaurus. Let me stick my neck out on the line by guessing that most of you will be familiar with this dinosaur because of its neck. You know, the one which was typically 30 feet in length? Despite its neck being its most distinctive feature, its name actually translates to arm lizard in Greek. It's common knowledge that the Brachiosaurus is one of the largest dinosaurs to ever have lived. On average, it reached 76 feet in length and 40 feet in height, as roughly the length of two school buses and as high as a four-story building none of which were around in the era of the big guy here. Fragmentary leg bones and vertebra of even larger dinosaur species are known, but these skeletal remains are too incomplete to determine their exact size. So this guy may have been the largest dinosaur ever. A renowned herbivore, thank goodness. The Brachiosaurus is thought to have eaten up to 880 pounds of dry plant matter every day. Most of this was made up of coniferous trees, ginkgos, and cycads. This target might have been hard to hit for this dinosaur, as researchers have learned that its teeth were spoon-shaped and not ideal for chewing food. This means that the creature would have swallowed vegetation whole, as its teeth were suited to stripping it but not breaking up large chunks of plants. This, along with the dinosaur's body shape, suggests that the Brachiosaurus would have liked to feed as quickly as possible. Dinos like these didn't always make use of their ability to strip towering trees when dining. The Brachiosaurus traveled in herds, moving to the next location once they had exhausted all of the local vegetation. And I mean all of the local vegetation, not just that which hung high on trees. It's likely that the creatures supplemented their diets with vegetation at lower levels, especially after they'd done a number on all the nearby trees. This method of feasting was the most energetically appealing for this giant. By munching on lower vegetation, researchers believe that the dinosaurs saved up to 80% in energy compared to when foraging for high-up food sources. They have also discovered that the nostrils of a Brachiosaurus were on the front of its face and not the top. This is because we now know they roam the fertile floodplains in their respective herds. For decades, it was believed that these creatures lived in deep, watery swamps. Let's look at another common misconception about a popular dinosaur. Please put your hands together for the Tyrannosaurus rex, which is arguably the most famous of all dinosaurs. Discoveries from the past 100 years have revealed that theropods had heavily feathered skin. Theropods are the family of dinosaurs to which the T. rex belongs, so naturally, people began to think that the creature would have been covered in feathers as well. However, a study from 2017 took skin impressions from the iconic dinosaur and found no evidence of the structures required to support feathers. If a T. rex did have feathers, they would have been limited to its back. Researchers accept that other large dinosaurs of the same family as the T. rex have been discovered with their remains covered in feathers. An example of this would be the Euteranus dinosaur. 
But as of now, the accepted theory is that feathers weren't a common feature of T. rexes. This makes it easier to believe that feathers were exclusive to smaller tyrannosaurids and were there as a means of keeping the creature warm. For a long period of time, researchers thought feathers were an exclusive feature of the theropod family. But this theory has been debunked. Just like the kid at camp who was kicked out of the top bunk. You know, debunked. Anyway, fossil evidence discovered in Siberia now suggests that multiple different family groups of dinosaurs had feathers. The Siberian fossils in question belong to another species of dinosaur, Calendodromius zabicolicus. Oh, you think I mispronounced that? Okay, prove it. Now, this dinosaur, I'll call her Kalinda, had a pelvis structure superficially similar to that of a bird and was roughly 4.5 feet long, about as tall as a fridge. Since the purpose of feathers on dinosaurs was for warmth, it's quite possible that dinosaurs from cold-weather climates had more feathers than their counterparts in warm-weather climates. In general, Bigger animals struggle less with keeping themselves cool, so it's likely that any of the large dinosaurs who lived in these warm climates had no feathers at all. Smaller dinosaurs who lived in cold climates, on the contrary, had plenty of feathers. We now even understand what some of the designs and patterns of these feathers on dinosaurs looked like. Thanks to the discovery of an ornithomimus, complete with feather and skin impressions. The name of this dinosaur is derived from Greek and actually translates to bird mimic. They were typically 11 and a half feet in length, nearly as tall as a giraffe, and despite being omnivorous, had no teeth. Its other distinctive features include three fingers, which were all unusually the same size and length. And despite their thin bone skulls, they also had large brain cavities. Their legs were extremely long, in particular their foot bones. Combine this with their toothless beaks and long necks, and yep, it must have looked a lot like an ostrich. Although they're not as big as the Brachiosaurus or dinosaurs in general, they are bigger than any other bird in the world. And it wasn't just the body limbs of an ornithomimus that made it resemble an ostrich. They also had very similar feather patterns. Their heads, necks, and lower legs were mostly bare of feathers but the rest of their bodies were well coated in downy plumage. This is what you call a bird's layer of feathers as a whole. It's possible, like an ostrich, that the dinosaur would have used this unusual feather pattern to regulate its body temperature. Despite some dinosaurs possessing feathers like birds, on top of also being their distant relatives, dinosaurs didn't have the type of feathers required to fly for most of their existence. Feathers found in fossil impressions or preserved in amber have allowed researchers to gain insight into why these creatures weren't very aerodynamic. The structure of these feathers appears to be very simple, with a poorly defined and flexible central shaft. These feathers would have better served any dinosaur as a fashion statement, as they would have helped attract the attention of other dinosaurs. These feathers also would have had the ability to regulate body temperature. Surprised to hear that dinosaurs had ostrich-like feathers? <laughs> Wait till I tell you that their prehistoric distant reptile cousins had something that looked like fur. Allow me to introduce you to the pterosaur. Its name is derived from Greek and translates to wing lizard. Just like dinosaurs, they were initially thought to have scaly or leathery skin all over their bodies. But over the course of the 20th century, Fossil examinations revealed that many parts of a pterosaur's body were furry. The wingspan of a pterosaur could reach the length of over 23 feet, about as long as a London bus. Its toothless jaw was very long and resembled that of a pelican. How could something that looks like a pelican be so terrifying? These creatures were coated in pycnofibers. Those were simple structures, feather-like in composition, but strand-like and fuzzy like fur. Further research suggests that some parts of the pterosaur's body had more complex kinds of feathers with branching strands. If this is accurate, it would be the first time feathers were found on an animal that was neither a dinosaur nor a bird. <laughs>